For storing most bits of client-side information, we would probably use something like local storage. However, cookies still have a place in our website, especially when we want to do some server-side rendering. And that is what we will demo in this lesson with the practical use case of running an A-B experiment. So let's go. We start off with an empty server-side rendered Resil project, which we have created in a previous lesson that I will link to in the description, but you are free to bring in any React application that you might already have. Now, of course, when we run this project, because our homepage is returning null, we get an empty page, which is exactly what you would expect. We have two simple components within our project called component A and component B. Let's render both of them within our homepage to see what they look like. You can see that component A is just a big red box with the text A and component B is just a big blue box with the text B. These components will serve as placeholders for running an A-B experiment on our website where for a certain amount of users, we would want to show the component A and for the other people, we would want to show the component B. We use this function called getExperimentAB that will randomly either return the string A or return the string B. If it returns the string A, then we are going to render the component A, otherwise we will render component B. So now, when we jump back to the browser based on the user's luck, they might see component B or they might see component A. Now, of course, when you are running an A-B experiment, whatever value gets assigned to a user randomly, you want that particular value to stick for that user as long as possible. To do that, we will create this function called getStickyExperiment that will randomly determine A or B, but once it's been determined for that user, it will save that value so that the user gets the same experience every single time. To do that, we will store the value that we get under the key called home experiment. Within the getSticky function, we will try to load the value from local storage and if it is found, then that is the value that we will return. Otherwise, we will get the value randomly from getExperimentAB, store that in local storage and then return that value. Now, of course, this website is designed to support server-side rendering and local storage is something that only exists within the browser and not within Node.js. So when we server-side render this, we will get a runtime error and that is what we see when we visit the website in the browser. Now this error is not particularly hard to fix. We just come up with a dummy value that we will use to render the component on the server and then utilize the use effect hook, which is something that only runs when the component gets mounted on the client and then invoke the getSticky experiment function to determine the value that this particular user should see and use that within the rendering of our component. And this will work as you would expect. If the user gets a sticky A, they will see the component A and if they get a sticky B, they will get the component B every time they refresh the browser. However, there is one obvious issue with this particular solution, and we can see that if we slow things down, that the user gets a flash of component A before they get component B. The reason for that might be fairly obvious. Because the state is stored in the client, the server is always rendering component A, and only on the client when we can read local storage can we determine that what is the component that we want to stick for this particular user. This is exactly the problem that is solved by using HTTP cookies. When a client with a stored cookie makes a request to the server, the browser automatically adds that cookie as a part of that initial request so we can use it to render the same thing that we rendered the last time for this particular client. Now, there are lots of libraries that are designed to make it easier for you to work with cookies, but my preference when working with Express and React is this library called Universal Cookie Express that comes with its own client-side library as well, which is called React Cookie. And of course, these libraries are fairly popular and I'm not alone in using them. These libraries are just bindings for the code that is provided by the same team called Universal Cookie, which as you can see, gets around 1 million downloads every week. With the installation out of the way, we jump into our server.tsx file and bring in the imports that we need from these two packages. We bring in the default export from Universal Cookie Express and bring in the cookies provider from React Cookie. Now we add this cookies middleware to our Express server before we render our React application. This middleware will add an object called Universal Cookies to our Express request, which we can use to then read and write cookies when we are rendering our app component. To make them available on the server during server-side rendering, we jump into this render app function and then wrap our app component with the cookies provider which we imported from React Cookies and for the server, we want the cookies to point to this request.universalcookies object that is populated by that middleware. Now, when our application is being rendered on the server, 
the cookies will automatically come from the HTTP request and be pushed back to the client as a part of an HTTP response header. Now, of course, we hydrate the app on the client side and we will use the cookies provider on the client as well. On the client side, we don't even need to provide any props to the cookies provider. Without any props, this component will automatically work with the browser provided cookie store. And that's it. With the middleware added and our component wrapped in a cookies provider, we can start using cookies without having to worry about are we on the client or are we on the server. So let's jump back to our home component and clean up the code that we previously wrote that was utilizing local storage. We delete the local storage version of the function as well as the use state and the use effect hooks. To use cookies within our React application, whether it is server side or client side, we will use the hook that is provided by React Cookie called Use Cookies. To make things easier for us, we will create our own custom hook called Use Sticky Experiment AB that will utilize the Use Cookies hook, but only for the cookie that we will call Home Experiment. Now, if this cookie is already set to the value A or B, then that is the value that we will return. Otherwise, we will do the same thing that we did before, which is get a new random value from the get experiment AB function and then set the cookie to this particular value so that it is present in future tries and finally return this new value. Within our component, we will use this new hook that we've created to determine the experiment value that we should use for this particular user. With this code in place, if you visit our application in the browser, we should get the same experience every single time and this experience is something that is going to be persisted in the user's cookies. The first time the user visits the website, we will invoke get experiment AB on the server and determine some value for the cookie and this cookie will be sent down as a part of the response headers that are sent to the client. When the browser sees this header, it will store it in its cookie storage and then every single time the browser makes another request to the server, this is sent as a part of that request and we can see that it is present within the request headers that are sent down as a part of the initial request by the browser so that we can access it when we are rendering the content on the server. The server sees this cookie and renders exactly what you would expect, that is the component A. And we can actually jump into the application tab within the Chrome debug tools, select the cookies for this particular host and modify its value to be something else, for example, B. And now when we refresh the page, the browser will send the cookie value B to the server, the server will look at it and render the component B, which we can verify within the preview tab. Hopefully you can see that even as we move to more and more advanced ways of sharing data between the client and the server, cookies still play a vital and fundamental role. And with modern JavaScript libraries, they're not particularly hard to get started with either. If you're looking at more ways for sharing data between the client and the server, here is a lesson where we look at jots. Thanks for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this and I will see you in the next one.